There are two questions, at least to me, sounds kind of similar. So I'm going to ask both. Uh, I'm going to read both of them first. And then you decide if you're going to ask, answer them separately or together. The first one is how to increase revenue when I, as a solo dentist, already collect 1.3 million per year? First question. Second question is how do I go from $5,000 a day to $8,000 a day in doctor production? Okay, those are similar questions, Aaron. Let me let me answer the first one, and and by virtue of answering the first one, I'll answer this. The second one will have the answers within it. Uh, first of all, uh, there it, it, a one point three million dollars solo dentist practice is a very very strong practice, but there is potential for growth. How can I say that? Because in our coaching base, and we have clients all over the country. In our coaching base, we have many clients, solo dentist that are producing and collecting somewhere between 1.6 and $2, $2 million a year. So maybe the motivation of knowing that it's been done before, it must be possible, you know, maybe that'll create the mindset for you to be able to grow. But I do want to compliment you. A $1.3 million practice is very strong. Um, and again, the, 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 the couple of ways that you can grow that practice is uh, more refined marketing, more refined marketing. Because at that point, you don't just need more new patients, but you need more of a particular kind of patient, maybe looking for particular high value services. So refine your marketing so it's not just, you know, a toothache patient. And there's nothing wrong with a toothache patient. In fact, some, uh, and I fall in that camp, think a toothache patient can be a good patient uh, for two reasons. First of all, I need some treatment, right? And, and secondly, if we can get them out of pain, they might we might lay the groundwork for that patient being a patient for life. So nothing wrong with toothache, toothache patients, but when you look at the value of a new patient, doctor, what would you rather have? Uh, a toothache patient or someone that is really excited about having Invisalign done? Well, I'm going to go for the latter, right? So refine your marketing. So uh, you attract more of the kind of patients that allow you to do the kind of dentistry, the higher value dentistry that you can do, um, and as I said before, the other way to do this is to also make sure we're growing your hygiene department. Uh, at 1.3, you likely have two full-time hygienists, but if you don't, make sure we, we get to two full-time hygienists, because again, a strong hygiene department correlates very directly uh, to um, uh, more productive and more productivity per day. Now, to go to that, how do we go from 3,000 a day to 8,000 a day? I mean, actually, 5,000 to 8,000. Yeah. 5,000, I'm sorry, 5,000 to 8,000. Well, um, again, it's going to come through um, uh, the way we schedule some high-value services in your practice. Um, because if you're doing more high-value services, your productivity per hour is going to go up. Uh, also, make sure that you are leveraging your auxiliary team members and your team members are trained to do everything they're allowed to do under the Practice Act. Uh, of course, I don't want you to violate that and step over the line but do everything they're allowed to do under the, uh, under the practice. If you're in a state uh, that has um, uh, uh, specific certifications uh, uh, for your dental assistants, uh, make sure they are uh, certified uh, to as much as they could possibly do um, and uh, really become more leveraged because there's many things that you're doing doctor that your team members could do. And, and then the third thing that I would do is really under a microscope Take a look at everything you're doing and see what you could delegate to your team members. A good example of that is, uh, Naren, many dentists enjoy photography. They enjoy yes. taking photos of their patients. And so as a result of taking photos of their patients, they decide they're going to be the ones that take the photos. And they rationalize it by, by saying, oh, I take better phone, uh, photos than my team members. But one of the ways you have, can grow from 5000 a day to $8,000 a day is not do anything that your team members are capable of doing. Does that make sense? Yes. And photos is just one of many examples you could look at and you could decide to train your team members to be able to do that. So it leverages you to do things that only the doctor can do. And it's really the combination of those things that will allow you to increase from 5,000 to 8,000. And I'm going to add one more thing, Aaron. And the last thing I'm going to add is work on improving your case presentation skills. Prese get, become very focused at learning how to 
improve your case presentation skills. And I would say maybe the key to that is learn how to ask the right questions to your patients. Learn how to ask the right questions. Uh, that might be a future episode for us on uh, either one of our podcasts, Aaron, but learn how to ask the right questions. Uh, because the old model of identify a problem, present a solution is old news. Uh, what's missing in there is the patient understanding what's going on. And when you start to see something like wear, uh, maybe extreme posterior wear, have your photos up and show the patient, ask a question. Hey, Naren, as I look at these photos right here, what do you see? What are you seeing? And maybe I point to your back teeth. And, and let's assume they're very warm. What the, might the patient say, Naren? Uh, I mean, like especially if you use an iPad and you make it easy for them to see the challenges in with their with their you know teeth is, teeth, they will say you know hey this is too crowded or you know whatever. This looks really worn out. This looks yeah. really worn. And then I might ask, well, Naren, how do you think that happened? Because I I, I bite down on my teeth. I I am always grinding my teeth. Well, that's what we'd like them to say. And they say <laughs> my wife my wife doesn't say I'm grinding or anything. <laughs> well, how do you think that happened? And then, then we can start to present some solutions. Right. But right. now the patient's involved. Right. Uh, many times when we know the patient is experiencing posterior grinding, we know it. Um, or it could be full mouth grinding. Oh, I don't grind my teeth. My wife's never said I grind my, grind my teeth. No, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't know. How that. do you think that happened? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it's a, it's engaging, but learn how to ask questions uh, because it, it, it allows the patient to become more involved and, and interested in the solution. Right, right. Yeah. Now, uh, you are kind of showcasing, Gary, I know I'm not sure if you realized you're doing it, but you have 44 years of experience. And I think the benefit your clients have is they don't need to take the, there are two roads. One is called the hard road and one is called the easy road. Uh, <laughs> you know, they take, get to take the easy road. Doesn't mean they don't have to do the work, but they don't have to like make mistakes and do three times the work to get the same results. They can just take the easy road and you know be more effective. Well, I'd also like to suggest that uh, every practice is unique. And as a result of that, the way one doctor grows from 5,000 a day to 8,000 a day might be very different than the way another doctor does that. And so part of it is identifying your style of practice and then providing solutions that matches up with the way you enjoy practicing dentistry. Um, and you know, has been 44 plus years. I've been physically in over 2000 practices. Uh, I do have a very interesting experience base to be able to, uh, share, uh, that perspective and wisdom with our clients. Thank you. Gary. As we bring this to a close, I do have one last question from, from the attendees of this event. What are the top three most profitable elective procedures that you would recommend? All right. Um, number one would be, um, placing and restoring dental implants. Now, if you don't want to place them, which is I completely understand, if you wouldn't want to place them, then work with the specialist to place them and then you restore them. Uh, when I look at dollar per unit of time, implants is, is a, the most productive by a, a fairly significant margin. Uh, secondly, I would say adult orthodontics, uh, both uh, an aligner system. I happen to favor Invisalign, but I, I, I can be agnostic, whatever brand you like in terms of aligners. Uh, and also a short-term adult ortho like uh, six months miles, where the ceramic brackets that use a wire uh, attachment. And then the third, uh, I would say, would be, depending on your interest, I'm going to give you two choices for number three. Either smile design, you know, uh, eight or 10 unit upper anterior porcelain veneer cases, smile design, Dr. Hornbrook, uh, go to davidhornbrook.com and you can see where his live courses are um, and uh, look at some great training under that. Or oral conscious sedation, uh, we have we have a client where we recently looked at this, his average case size in oral conscious sedation um, is $7,200. It's not exotic dentistry, but it's everyday general dentistry. Uh, but it's a lot of it because of the maintenance effect that the patient hasn't been taken care of for many years. That particular office has a mill as an in-office mill, and they're able to do those in, in one appointment. Um, and when you look at, depending what the treatment looks like, it's a three or four hour appointment, but look at production per unit of time when the average case side is $7,200. So those, those are my answers there, Naren. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate it. Uh, 
Any final thoughts? Let's bring this episode to a close. Yeah, let me bring it back full circle and invite all of our listeners to uh, get the download of that success stories event that we did. You're going to love to hear from the dentists. Uh, these are wonderful, wonderful. They, they, they volunteered their time. They simply wanted to share their story. They're so excited about what's happening in their practice. They want to share it with their colleagues. Um, and you're talk, you get to hear from actual dentists. Uh, we had a panel discussion. Uh, it was wonderful. So download that. Put it in your library, download it, pay attention to it. Uh, and again, that's available where, Naren? It's, uh, they have to send an email, Gary, and the email, they have to send it to team at rid.academy. Team at rid.academy. And again, that's going to be available for a limited period of time. There's no charge to it. Download it while you can. Um, on that note, let me simply say thank you all for uh, the privilege of, of your time today. And Naren and I look forward to connecting with you on the next Less Insurance Dependence podcast.